Hey guys, I've got another distribution review for you today. This is Manjaro i3. I really like the i3 window manager. I really like the Manjaro distribution and I really like that there are enough enthusiastic members of the Manjaro community to actually put i3 together as an operating system in and of itself based on Manjaro. This is the first time I've seen a window manager, a tiling window manager, uh, be the center of an entire distribution. Of course, there is BSPWM, which I reviewed uh, a few days ago, but this was actually the first one that I was actually introduced to, uh, and I really, really am impressed with it. In fact, I was impressed with it so much that I've installed it uh, as my regular driver on my secondary machine, which is just a small, very slow netbook, which I sometimes take out uh, when I'm traveling just to do a few light tasks. And um, it's really particularly good in that scenario because, of course, it being a netbook and being portable means that I don't always have the space uh, to actually just pull out a mouse. So having a, a keyboard orientated um, window manager or desktop environment actually just sort of allows me just that little bit more convenience and that little bit more portability uh, on, on a netbook. Now, obviously, that won't get you very far on something like a tablet, but, um, you know, different workflows for different people, isn't it? So. Um, I really like the fact that this is not only super lightweight, but it actually looks really nice as well. And then if you are installing it on a slower machine, it doesn't mean that you're relegated to using out of date or at least particularly old software simply because it runs better um, or because, um, you know, because it's part of a, a long term uh, release or something like that. Uh, it's actually just really nice to actually have completely um, sort of up to date software or at least reasonably new and up to date software, but at the same time being reasonably stable on top of a lightweight but good looking desktop environment. And I'm going to keep calling it a desktop environment sort of out of habit because even though this is made up of lots of small individual components they come together so succinctly that it does feel like a desktop environment even though it might not fit the technical definition now as you can see in the top right we've got Conkey, which allows us to review our system resources at work we've got the taskbar at the bottom which gives us a pretty comprehensive view of the system as well it gives us the cpu remaining disk space uh, wireless connectivity um, sort of LAN connectivity, uh, power utilities, uh, date and time, as well as the system tray, which has a network manager, the update manager, the clipboard manager, and a volume manager. So there's a lot there. Also, I do like the background, um, which also includes a few handy desktop shortcuts. It's the first time I've actually ever said that I like the default desktop environment, I think, but uh, the, the default um, desktop wallpaper, because it's usually something that I change out almost as one of the first things that I do. But having a few useful keyboard uh, shortcuts there just to help people get started is uh, is really useful. And of course, in the bottom left there, you can see that it's referring to the first desktop. Uh, this actually works really well on multi-monitor setups. And all of this is completely customizable. Uh, but in order to customize i3 effectively, you really have to go into config files. Now they're reasonably easy and straightforward to edit, but isn't it just nice to just have a pre-installed and pre-set up uh, version of i3 to even just showcase what it can do and what it's capable of um, if if for no other reason. The i3 website is also worth looking, uh, worth looking at because it has the full list of sh keyboard shortcuts as well as a really good getting started guide. So um, let's get started with this then. So uh, if I just wanted to pull up say a terminal that's just a Windows key and enter and then I can put top just as an example to show you just a fleshed out um, terminal. Then I can press Windows key and enter again, and this just cuts it in half. Now, if I don't want to cut it in half horizontally, I can press Windows key and shift, and then I can move it around. So I've got the uh, my empty terminal on the right there, and I've got my top on the left, or I can just simply move it the other way, or I can sort of uh, just move it on the bottom or move it on the top. Or if I, uh, if I wanted to do something else, I could also, um, Windows key, shift and space, and that pulls it up into a separate window in a more sort of traditional way. This now is starting to look like a really sort of like an 80s hacker operating system. If I wanted to move that floating window, and of course you can see here that wherever the mouse hovers over is the, uh, is the active window, I can press Windows key and left click and that just moves it around, and Windows key and right click and that just makes it smaller or of course larger. And then I can simply um, just press Windows key, shift and space, and then it pops back in if it's um, you know, for a horizontal split or of course, vertical. Of course, this has another um, 
operating paradigm, I guess you'd call it, which is a tabbed mode. Uh, this is very simple. This is as simple as just pressing Windows key and W. And as you can see here, it's got a very similar layout to what you might expect from a browser like Chromium or Firefox, uh, where you just simply click the tabs at the top. And then, of course, you can have another one there. And it just, uh, if I wanted to close a window, it's Windows key, Shift and Q. And there you go. We've got our two remaining tabs left and Windows key, Shift and Q to close that again. Okay, so starting an application is easy enough. Uh, to access the most user-friendly menu, it's as simple as Windows key and Z, and then it gives you accessories, graphics, internet, and, uh, and you've got that. So it comes with the Pale Moon browser by default, which is an interesting choice. Um, it's slightly different. I would have perhaps gone with the light browser that we saw in BSPWM, but uh, Pale Moon's not bad. Um, it looks pretty good, although if not a little bit dated. Um, personally, I actually switch it out for something um, a little bit more mainstream, either a Firefox or a Chromium. But you have plenty of options. So you've got multimedia. It comes with VLC, which is rather heavy for, uh, for a lightweight-based environment. Uh, it comes with e-links, of course, hex chat if you're into the IRC. So mail reader. So it comes pretty full-featured. It even comes with some, well, no, I was going to say it comes with some office tools, it comes with a PDF viewer. And then you've got settings as well. But again, settings really just does seem to be more naturally suited to the command line environment. There's the Manjaro settings manager um, and a few other things. You've got to customize the look and feel, uh, which you might not, which, you, which are not easy to do from the, uh, from the command line. So if you wanted to, for example, quick launch an uh, application, you could just press the Windows key in D and it comes up with this rather odd looking kind of menu system. But if I wanted Pale Moon, I could just press P-A-L-E and then it comes right back up with it. And then it's just as easy as launching that. Uh, what, it, what you will find happens as well with this menu, which you press Windows key in D to open, is that your most commonly used applications will be the easiest to access via left and right keys as well. So we can quit that. There's not really too much more to show you other than just a, what, 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 what. There's not really too much to show you now that isn't just going through the getting started guide, which explains how to get started significantly better than I'm doing right now. But I do have to say this looks good. Um, its uh, workflow is really, really nice. Uh, it is easy to customize. It's all in the um, in the configuration file in the .i3 directory in your home directory. There are some things I'd remove. There are some software that I'd switch out. I wouldn't go with Pale Moon. Um, I can understand why they would have the uh, graphical uh, update manager for people that perhaps aren't as comfortable with the command line. But if you are a user that just loves working on the command line uh, over working in GUI environments, this could very well be the desktop environment for you. Um, yeah, it all feels very coherent uh, to the point where it feels more comfortable to refer to this as a desktop environment than a window manager with a whole bunch of stuff thrown in. Lots of very small, very, uh, you know, lots of small applications that work really well together. I certainly recommend giving this a go. It runs really quite well in a virtual machine um, in the 64-bit mode, but I have had some problems running the 32-bit version of this distribution in a virtual machine. I don't know if that's some, um, you know, sort of poorly chose settings on my part, uh, or whether or not it's just simply that the 64-bit is just a little bit better supported. Uh, I couldn't say, um, but. There, you know, there is a reason why I use this on my secondary machine, and um, there is a reason why I'm very, very happy with it. This workflow is absolutely fantastic. It's very snappy, and it even comes with the compositing, uh, compositing effects, which you can, of course, turn off. But um, it looks good. It works well, and it has um, re re really good up-to-date software and an incredibly large software repository to boot. So definitely worth a look, specifically if you're interested in a very keyboard-centric, very lightweight. Uh, uh, window manager. In fact, to be honest, I'd recommend possibly even trying out the i3 window manager on whatever distribution it happens to be that you're running on now. It's in most um, software. It's in this. It's in most software repositories of most operating systems in the Linux world. So give it a go. That's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you've tried i3 yourself, uh, free or feel free to share your experience down in the comments section below. It'd be interesting to hear, um, you know, sort of other people's take on it. That's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.